Hi everyone, good morning. It's uh, Tuesday morning, Tuesday, March 31st, and we are continuing the post-it note, post-it pop art, stay at home coronavirus season, post-it note series. I gotta work up a better title than that. <laughs> hey, how's it going everybody? I am so glad you're here. My name's Todd Nock. I'm a professional comic book artist, currently drawing the Gwen Stacy series over at Marvel Comics. Hopefully you're checking out my new series written by my friend Christos Gage, excellent Spider-Man writer, and um, colored by my friend Rochelle Rosenberg, who is a superstar color artist um, and lettered by Joe Caramanga. So uh, really great uh, creative team. So uh, hopefully you're having a chance to check it out. Issues one and two are in stores now. Um, I know a lot of comic shops are closed right now, uh, but some are still open. So check your local comic shops, give them a call and say, are you open? Some stores are doing uh, mail, uh, they'll mail you your, your comics, they will ship them to you, or they have a curbside pickup. So you don't even have to go in the shop, you, don't even, you can maintain that six foot distance. You just drive up, they'll hand it to you at the curbside, you don't even have to get out of your car, and you can just keep on booking right on home, wash your hands, and then read some comic books. That's probably the best way to go. I would think. Check with your local doctor. Uh, so, enough of that, gang. We're going to draw a, a Hawkman from the Justice League. Uh, on Twitter, I asked people, of these four DC Comics super teams, who would you like to see me draw? And Justice League came in number one, so we're going to start with Justice League. Then we'll have three other DC super teams throughout this this week. So it's DC week here on uh, the Todd Knock Art live stream. So let's flip the camera around and let's uh, get drawing. All right, here we go. Got to readjust the clamp. Okay, it's trying to focus on my hand. That's what the problem is there. There we go. So I'll be drawing on a post-it note, but you draw on whatever you want or have available to draw on. Your sketchbook, art paper, whatever it is. Um, use whatever art tools you have and draw at whatever art skill level is your skill level. Um, you do you. The main thing here is to have some fun. I'll share some tips and tricks, and maybe um, you can, uh, you know, maybe learn a little something here. Um, at the very least, let's hope we have some fun. So I'm using this brown kind of, it's like a brown paper bag paper, uh, post-it note paper I got at the Daiso Japan uh, store a while back. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I thought it'd be kind of a cool look here for Hawkman. And let's do a profile here. I really want to take full advantage of that Hawkman beak looking helmet mask thingy. So starting with my circle of a skull. Kind of finding the side of the face. Then we have the back of the skull, which would lead to the neck. Get that eye line going. Brow. Nose, mouth, those halfway points towards the chin. Now we won't see his eyeball, but I want to know where his eyeball is so that when I put the mask on him, it fits, the eye lens fits right where it should be. So we have his nose, give him kind of a strong superhero nose. And come down to the chin here, cheek, jawline. Let's see if we can figure out this mouth here. Maybe he's gritting his teeth a little bit. So I have him looking up just a little bit, looking up to the sky. Maybe Hawkman's looking ready, ready to take flight. So he's got that big white lens there, that hawk eye lens, not hawk. Not Hawkeye. Hawkeye is different than Hawkman. Two completely different characters. But Hawkman's hawk mask has a hawk eye, where Hawkeye's mask has a human eye. Don't get it confused. Please. Work in that beak that goes over his nose. Even though I drew in the nose, we won't really see much of it, but at least I know where it is, so if I do, we do see any part of his nostril or anything like there, I know like that, I know it fits where it belongs. I 
And it's got that one kind of part that comes down there. Let's finish out his neck here, make sure we have his neck. Now Hawkman's a pretty beefy guy, so we're going to want a nice, thick, muscular neck. He is, he is not, not a slender hero, where Spider-Man might be a more of a slender hero, and Hulk is like mega massive. I think Hawkman is probably about as, probably no, probably just, probably just a little bit bigger than Captain America, kind of in between what Captain America and Thor, like maybe a little bit smaller than Superman, but maybe a little bit beefier than Batman. Just, that's my personal observation there. Just a, a quick, quick guesstimate of how big Hawkman would be size-wise in the superhero or DC pantheon of heroes. Roughly, that, that's just a really rough estimate, people. Different artist mileage may vary. So now we gotta work in those, those uh, wings that go on his helmet here. They're kind of kind of a little bit like Thor's, Thor's kind of helmet wings, but a little bit of a different shape. They don't really pull down as far down this way. So I'm gonna kind of get the basic shape and then I'll figure out where the, um, the feathers layer in. Kind of just all fan out there. Now have his top of his helmet here and then the other wing we'd see just a little bit on that side there. But not a lot of it because there's a profile shot but I wanted to just show a little bit of the other wing on the other side. He has kind of this ridge from the back of this helmet here. It's got the ridges that kind of run along the eye. It's kind of arc that brow a little bit more, make him look a little angrier. And then the ridges that run across the forehead. A little bit of that, this little shape here, well, she see just the little tip of it on that side there. So over his shoulders, he'll have those yellow harness straps for his wings. We might even see some of the wing back here. Okay, so that kind of gets the pencil stage done. Oh, I forgot to mention, I am using my Kuni, or Uni Kuratoga 0.3 HB lead mechanical pencil. Now, a lot of people ask what pencil are you using, so I always try to remember to mention what tools I'm using throughout the video. Oh, let's see, let's, uh, now in this eyeball here, the eyeball lens, he has a little tiny dot of a, of an eyeball, historically. Okay, let's uh, let's throw down some inks. There it is. Ah! Dropped one of my pens. Sorry, gang. Uh, gonna use the my favorite inking tools, the Microns, Pigma Micron pens here. Working from foreground to background. This uh, one wing. Head wing here is going to be closest to the foreground. So I'm going to ink it first. And feathers are almost like kind of like hair, my approach to hair, which is those chunky shapes with uh, some thinner strands inside. Just kind of arcing and pulling towards the 
the, um, the root of the feather. A little more concentrated as we get to the base of the feather or of the, the head wing. Now let's uh, work the eyeball. Really gonna put that arc in the, in the brow there. Hawkman's kind of a gruff sort of guy. He's not your, he's not quite as cheery like a, like a Barry Allen Flash or, you know, he, he's not one of those, he's not really a smiley hero. He's not like a, that kind of like how you'll see, you'll see Superman smile every now and again. Superman, he can get serious, he can get determined, but he's also pretty friendly. Hawkman, I've never seen as a very friendly, not to say he can't be friendly, but just when he's in uniform, he seems to be pretty, pretty all business. Much like, uh, much like Batman. Now we got that beak, little, little arc to the beak, arc, arc up this way and then come arc down. Over to the side portion that kind of runs down the side of his jawline. A little extra shadow underneath his eye there. Got a little, that little beak nostril. And we got these uh, helmet ridges here. Now I'm drawing the classic like Silver Age, Bronze Age uh, Hawkman. And so I wanna keep in mind, like I'm doing the brow and then I do like the forehead and rest of his skull um, to kind of really show the arcs of those planes. It's not just throwing in a bunch of lines but I'm trying to be mindful of the shape of his brow as well as his head and skull so that I'm conveying as much of the form of his head and skull and brow as possible. So it gives a sense of, of volume and mass to Hawkman's head. If I just drew a bunch of straight lines down, it might not come across as showing that there is uh, a roundedness to his head. And let's see the back of his helmet there. Start to work on these neck muscles. That chin. I'm going to switch to a finer point micron here to do the rest of his mouth area there. I want to make sure that it um, it maintains the crisp line that I want. I feel the 0 0.8 micron might be a little too too thick of a micron. The nib might be too 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 thick that it might uh, muddy what I, I'm, I'm wanting to achieve. So I'm just gonna hold off on that part for the moment. And a little bit of the wings back here. A 
So we're just kind of seeing the... What's that part of the... the I'm not, let's see, the feathers... What, what, what's that part of the wing called? I'm sure, there, I'm sure an ornithologist would know what that part where the... Like the kind of arm part, the jointed part of the wing. We'll just call it that. The jointed part of the wing. We're going to see those armatures. Maybe armatures is a good word for it. The armatures of the wing. We're going to see a little bit of that back, back there. Talon, uh, talons are the feet, like the claw feet. I believe those are what the talons are. Again, I'm not an ornithologist, so. But uh, talons are definitely an aspect of a bird, especially a bird of prey. So now we're going to switch to the zero one micron. Since I know where the full nose is there, I know that we have a little bit of the nostril cutting there underneath. And we might see just the bottom part of his nostril. Having drawn in the full, no full nose helps me know where that part of his nose is and what is fitting underneath that beak. I like to call that drawing all the way through. Even though you're not going to see it, you draw it, you sketch it in anyway, just so you know where everything is and know that everything's going to fit where it should. Instead of just kind of guessing, well, I got the beak here, his nose will be in here, here somewhere. There's a greater chance of things not lining up if I don't do the math ahead of time. So let's see, um, now I'm going to take my eraser. Oh, there it is. I'm going to start with my Kneaded art gum eraser. See how much of this graphite I can pull off of the post-it. Looks like it's getting just about everything. All right, so let's come in with some colors. I'm using uh, Copic sketch markers, but you use whatever you have on hand. It's a different brand of marker, colored pencils, crayons, watercolor, whatever you're using, go for it. So I'm gonna come in with some colors slightly darker than what I would use for white paper. I'm gonna start with the E02. I'm gonna work dark to light. So I'm gonna hit all my potentially shadow areas first. So anything that overlaps will be, or where something is overlapping, is gonna be creating a shadow, like underneath the mask, under the beak, I should say. If the light is coming from above, which we're gonna assume the light is from above, most of the time, I think the light comes from above, whether it be the sun or a light bulb. Unless they're being lit from below, the light's probably going to come from above. Now I'm going to switch to the E01, a little lighter shade. Moving further away from the, the darker, the, the, the shadowed areas, moving towards the light. And then just a little bit of E double zero. Just to finish finish it off there. He's not super shiny, so I'm not gonna have a lot of highlight on on Hawkman here. 
Maybe just like a little bit on the chin, a little bit there on the neck, just a teeny tiny, tiny bit. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, let's color the beak. It's gonna be kind of yellowish. So we're gonna start with some Y21 here initially. Let's bring in a little Y19. I'm gonna bring this into this part here where it seems from my reference, this is kind of orange, light orange, yellow. So we're gonna bring a little yellow over into here so we can transition from yellow to orange, yellow to light orange to orange. So that was the Y19. I'm gonna bring in a little YR12, a lighter orange. We're gonna see if we can start to blend these colors together here. I'm gonna bring in a little Y13. It's a very light shady yellow, but I'm using it to, to blend. I don't use a colorist blender for my blending. I use the lightest shade of whatever colors I'm working with. I feel I get a, a more smoother, I get a smoother uh, transition in my blended color rather than using the colorless blender, which is essentially just alcohol in a marker, um, rubbing alcohol. So uh, it, it, um, I don't like the way, that, I, I think it's great for creating really cool textures um, or effects, but if I wanna blend the colors, I, I personally prefer to use a lighter color of whatever color family I'm working with to get that um, smooth, smooth uh, transition because these inks are made to blend together. So now some YR27, it's kind of a, a brownish shade of orange. Gonna use this for the dark areas. We're gonna work dark to light again. So the undersides of things like this brow here, the bottom part of the brow. Bottom part of the forehead, it's all kind of working up towards the light source. This is also the same orange in the the orange of the helmet here, the head here, matches the wings on the side, so I'm gonna use the same brownish orange to start with. The further away we get from the light, the more dark color I'm gonna use. To create that sense of shadow and distance. The closer I get, the less. General rule of thumb. There can be exceptions to the rule, but right now that's just kind of the general rule of thumb I, I can start with and then adjust as I go if necessary. So now we're gonna to switch to the YR16. Was Hawkman on Super Friends? Yes, he was. That's where I first learned of Hawkman was the Super Friends cartoon. Absolutely. Yeah, he came in, I think, in around the same time as Green Lantern and Flash and I think Black Vulcan and Apache Chief, I think he was around that time. He was definitely a, a, a on the show by the time they got to the challenge of the Super Friends, which I loved because you had all these heroes and all these bad guys, the Legion of Doom every, every week. And I just thought that was so great because I love seeing all these good guys fighting all these bad guys. So now I just color over that darker orange with my lighter orange, still leaving a little open because I'm gonna come in with that Y, that, that, that uh, was it, YR12, that lighter shade of orange. Let's go put a little bit more of this orange down into this part of his helmet. So I am gonna come back with this YR12 and blend that in a little bit more. Really kind of texturizing it. And then we got the lighter shade of orange just taking us right up to the top of the, the helmet wings, the brow, all of that. So that takes care of his helmet. Now we have his shoulder straps here. I'm gonna start with my Y21 again. And then we're gonna to go to the Y13.
And finish it off with a little Y double zero. And that takes care of his yellow straps. Now let's go ahead and add the uh, color to his wings here. We'll, we'll use neutral grays. We'll work dark to light with neutral gray four. And then some neutral gray three. When I see a spot at the back of his helmet, I didn't color, so we're going to grab that YR27 again. Because it's so far in the back, hidden by everything, we're just going to have that dark orange back there. Because it's not getting as much light. So now we're going to do the realistic shadow, quote unquote. So we're going to start with some cool gray 2, initially. And with this gray, we're really going to start putting some shadows up under under the, the beak. Starting with a cool gray too, I can always go darker if I need to. Definitely gonna have some shadows up under this wing here. Down the neck there. We use some of this in the beak. So right where the brow is there, I think. Along that cheek line, that bird cheek, along the bottom side of the beak there. Maybe a little bit around the nostril. Might be nice. Gonna flesh out that cheek shape. All right, so I think I'm gonna pump up to a cool gray three for the orange parts. May go even a little bit darker at some point. But right now we're gonna use some cool gray three. So I'm a few little darker spots here. Even where I put the cool gray two, I still wanna go a little darker in some spots especially right up underneath the helmet, underneath the jaw, just to create more depth. Start putting some here through the mask wings, helmet wings, around the brow and around the eye, underneath that row of feathers, right there at the base of the feathers. Now I'm going to come in with some cool gray 4 for a little darker shadow. Especially around the eye. Really want it kind of deep set and moody and broody. Maybe even it up uh, in the mask a little bit. Even letting these shadows get a little darker. I'm going to use some of this dark, cool gray in the eye. Now it's darker than I would use if it was white paper. Maybe a little bit here on the teeth. I'm going to do my white pencil trick. Just throw some of this here on those wings back there. Maybe a little bit more at the back of the neck. So I'm going to come in with white pencil. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now while we're talking about it. So I go over all of this with white pencil, and this will give me white, a nice subtle white, on this colored paper. Same for his teeth. I'm going to put a little highlight running down the center of his beak as well. Nice thing about a colored pencil is you can really bear down and add more color to the image. So see I color over that gray and it lightens it up to just the right shade of gray I would have used if this were white paper. So that's my little trick there. Okay, now let's, uh, let's drop a fade in the background here. 
um, I was thinking that I'm going to do something that's maybe kind of a little bit of a sunset sort of look. So I can utilize some orange in the background to tie into his helmet here. So um, I'm going to start with some BV25, Blue Violet 25. I'm going to come in with some V15. Going to get kind of purpley, really purpley, really fast. BV25. That was coming in with some YR16. Actually, that might be too vibrant of an orange. That's okay. Let's try some YR12. Nice thing about Copic markers, these inks are made to blend together so you can color over other colors and make new colors. Especially like completely different colors. Oranges and purples, you can color over each other and it starts to blend and merge and make a new color. In fact, so much that orange is overpowering. Let's come back with this V15 and let the purple kind of take over again. It also creates a nice, nice gradation of color, too. Back to that YR12, just to kind of smooth out that transition. And then um, a little um, Y00, pulling from the orange down into the rest of the paper there. So we kind of get a, a purple to orange to yellow transition there. So now it's time for my finishing move. Longtime viewers, you know what my finishing move is. You know what it is. It's the Uniball Signo white gel pen. So we're gonna put that, that trademark white highlight around the perimeter. of Hawkman here. A little bit more. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this side of his helmet just as a kind of design sense here. Just to give his helmet a little more pop off of his wings and then can kind of maybe letting the line fade there behind his shoulders. So it just gives him, just gives a little bit more kind of balances out the white, I guess is what I'm wanting to say. It balances out the white. So, just stylistically. Oh, and you know what? I think it would be fun is to kind of put a little kind of lens highlight there in the, uh, in the, the kind of roundedness of his lens. Because that's not really his eye, eyeball. It's the mask's eye. Um, and his eyeball is behind it, much like Spider-Man's lenses. It's kind of the same for Hawkman, just by my, by my take of it all, the way I perceive it. In fact, I want to use a little more gray here on his jawline. So going back to the cool gray three, just want a little bit more punch. I think it just kind of adds a little more depth there. And so now I just need to put my name on this and the date. Today is the 30th, it's the 30th or the 31st? Today is the 31st, right? 31st, yes. Of March, last day of March. 2020. 
and there is Hawkman. Don't often get to draw Hawkman, and that's a lot of fun to do to get to draw this guy. Um, let's flip the camera around and we can uh, close out this today's uh, live stream. Hey gang, let me uh, just reconnect into the uh, rig here. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, tomorrow is April Fool's Day. I'll be drawing a Justice Society member for April Fool's Day tomorrow, so do tune in for that. Uh, here's Hawkman, and uh, Hawkman was also on the Justice Society. Many of the DC heroes are on, have been on multiple teams, much like how many Marvel heroes have been on multiple teams. But uh, I just thought Hawkman would be kind of unexpected. You know, people might not expect me to draw Hawkman for Justice League. Many people might have thought Superman, Batman, while I love those characters, I thought Hawkman would be a fun, interesting take because of his helmet. It's so, so different, so unique. I thought it might be a fun exercise today. So please, if you are drawing along, uh, be sure to post your illustration on your social media and tag it, pop, uh, post it pop art and uh, tag me so that I can get a chance to see it as well. Uh, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and also feel free to leave a comment in the video section below or the comment section below, I should say, um, if you're watching this on replay. Thank you for all your posts and questions here during uh, today's uh, live stream. For those of you watching live, I really appreciate y'all being here and hanging out with me. And uh, hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you learned something. And if you just discovered me, if this is your first time watching, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Just uh, smash that subscribe button tap that bell and set your notifications to alert you when I schedule my next live streams and upload new art videos. Um, right now I'm drawing uh, post-it note illustrations every weekday, 9 a.m. Pacific, that's 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, and that's 3, or I'm sorry, 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time in case you live internationally. Hopefully you can calculate what time that is in your part of the world. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, and, and during this coronavirus uh, stay-at-home season, hope you're uh, staying healthy, staying well, continue to wash your hands. And if you go outside, go out and about, if you have to run errands, make sure you're keeping your hands washed and sanitized and uh, try to avoid touching your face, especially when you're out and about, if you haven't washed your hands. Make sure you wash your hands fir first or sanitize them first before you scratch your nose, rub your eye, or anything like that. Let's try to minimize this coronavirus. But if you're at home, you should be safe. So uh, gang, thanks so much. So glad you could join me and I'll see you tomorrow morning when we draw someone from the Justice Society and I already have in mind who I plan to draw. I'm very excited to get to draw this character. So gang, until, uh, until I see you tomorrow, keep on drawing, keep having fun. I'm Todd Nock. Take care.